Welcome to Energizing Life with AKR Fitness. I am not Jace. I am Mike, <laughs> stepping in for the hosting role today. As ever, Lindsay is here with us in our, in our usual spot. I am. How are you doing, Lindsay? Yeah, feeling good. Looking forward good. to this. Good. And today is a special show again because we have one of our members, Susan, with us today. Hi, Susan. Hi, Mike. Hi, Lindsay. Hello. Great to have you with us. I think we'll start, if you could just give us a little introduction to who you are, uh, and we'll, we'll go from there. So, I'm Susan. I've uh, been at AKR five years, with a, a break in between that. I uh, live locally um, to AKR. I'm a mum of two grown-up children. Um, I have a lovely Labrador at home, and I work as a specialist nurse for motor neuron disease. Super, super. So, Susan, you and I first met... Uh, in September 2015, it was just a few days after AKR first opened its doors. If you can, take your mind back to, to that sort of time in your life and tell us first of all where you were at with, with health and fitness and, and what you've been doing you know, in the years prior to that. So when I, I remember when I first drove past AKR and, um, oh, there, there's a, a new gym, there's fitness. So before that, I'd really been going around all the gyms in Aberdeen. You know, I, I remember starting aerobics in the early 90s um, when my children were very young. And then, you know, as the years went on, gyms began to open and fitness so I took on a different, a different angle. It wasn't just going to classes. So it's fair to say I'd probably been a member at most gyms in Aberdeen or, or paid my membership and not really gone very often. Um, but at the time I, I came past AKR, I was going to a, a smaller gym. I'd been there maybe four or five years, but I was, I was intrigued about AKR. And, and was that, you know, having been around different gyms, was it a case of, oh, there's something new let's let's step in and see see what that is was it was it simply like curiosity at that time it was curiosity at that time um i think probably the gym i'd been at you know i maybe got to a stage where i was feeling a bit stuck um and i thought well there there's something else to try and that had been my history pretty much mm -hmm. up until I, I i joined akr and so you'd you'd, you'd been at gyms did you consider yourself you know, physically fit? Like, wh where were you at with your, ter your health and fitness? It, it's hard to say because my health and fitness has meant different things for me throughout my years. You know, um, I'm now in my mid-50s. And, you know, I, I suppose if I'm honest, health and fitness at that time for me was still about losing weight. Um, I never really considered all the other aspects, not just physical aspects to health and fitness. It was always about becoming a certain size, um, lifting a heavier weight. I don't know when I came into AKR that I was actually aware that there was anything different. Um, and so I just kind of continued in that, that that's a same frame of mind. Um, I've always struggled with, with weight. Um, it's been up, it's been down, um, it's been my focus, it's been absolutely not my focus. Um, so I've, I've never really found balance before. It's always been a bit of an all or nothing approach to, to, to gyms, to health, to fitness. So if I'm, if I'm picking up right, that sounds like always, always like, like it's a common story, isn't it? Always trying to lose weight, always on a diet, always trying something new and, and a different gym and a different approach. Whatever came up, it was like, ooh, this, this is maybe the answer. Would, would that capture it? Is that absolutely, fair? Absolutely, absolutely. And AKR was just, ooh, something new. Something new. Some, I haven't seen this before. This might fix me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so you, you came in. I remember we met. I think, you, I think you signed up, but then you had some second thoughts. I think you wanted to continue where you were at for, for a little bit longer. Do you, do you remember that at the time? I, I do remember that. And I'm not sure, I, I, I can't really remember what the reasons were, but I just remember feeling some kind of, I look back now, some kind of loyalty to where I was. Um, I remember that I really liked what you were saying, but I wasn't really sure that I understood it at mm -hmm. the time. Um, and so I stayed where I was, but, I, you know, I guess I just, 
you know, I, I think there was something that really resonated when I spoke with you. Mm -hmm. And um, perhaps I wasn't ready to leave where I was. Um, but I just kept thinking about the things you'd, you'd said and then decided to, to come along. I, I just felt, I, f I felt there was something different when I came into AKR. I actually remember the first day that you were here, you were sitting on the sofa at the first meeting with Mike. Like, I can remember it so vividly. I think it's because we just opened. It was the first week, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and right. you, you just... You just seemed like sort of the right person for us at the right time. I don't know what it was, but I can always remember your glow, your energy. I was like, we can really help Susan, I think. So I can, I can remember that. So I, well. I wonder if part of, part of the reason, though, like with us being so new, like maybe part of my skill set and our skill set at the time was not being able to explain and describe well enough like what we, what we were, what we had to offer and things like that. Well, maybe you're right. I certainly got a sense of who you were as a person and what your vision was. I mean, if I'm recommending AKR to anybody now, I don't really need to describe it because people see the change in me. But it has taken me, you know, five years here now um, and it's taken me a long time. And I, I guess we'll maybe talk a bit about the ups and downs throughout our chat today. Mm. Yeah, so so it was then it was it was into the next year. I, th I think it was April that you you came back again and said, actually, you know, now I I definitely do want to come and join. Do, can you remember what what changed and and what happened that yeah. time? So I think every day I was driving past because I do live locally, and every day I was seeing this sign and every day I was remembering the conversation with you. And, and where I was at before, there was nothing wrong with it. There, there absolutely wasn't anything wrong with it. But I just felt stuck. And I think I had read a bit more on your, your web page, your, your, your site, your Facebook um, page. And there was just more things that I liked. I liked that it was really small. I really liked that there were only, I can't even remember how many members, but I think about 50 or something. Probably, Probably not, not even. Yeah. Maybe yeah. not even that, <laughs> right enough. I, I think it was something like, maybe it was even 30. I really liked the sound of that. Um, I like people. I like getting to know people. So I think that's what, what brought me back, that was one of the main things. And I think I had spoken to someone who was coming, someone that I knew, not, not um, in any big way, but I knew through work. Um, and I think I saw that she was coming. Um, so I thought, right, it, it's time. And so you mentioned, like when we first met, that you, you kind of a little bit about your first impressions and you got a sense of who I was. What did it feel like coming in that April 2016, were you nervous? What were your impressions and your expectations and your hopes at the time? So I remember that, so we met again just before I joined in April 2016. And I remember chatting with you and you asked me what my goals were and it was to get into a certain pair of jeans. And to wear, yeah, yeah, and to wear, um, you know, a white T-shirt with a particular pair of jeans that I've had in my, my wardrobe for ages. Um, I got a sense that that you got to know people, not as members of a gym, but as people. I, I got a sense that it was a really clean facility. Um, and you know, this this might sound strange, but immediately I just had a sense of belonging. And that, that goes back to, you know, I can go back to, to my childhood even. I've never really felt I've belonged anywhere. And it's, I think more than anything, that's what AKR has brought me. Mm -hmm. And talk a little bit more about that. What Have you thought about like, where did that come from? What, what made you feel that way, do you think? So, so I don't mind saying I grew up, um, you know, it was so late 60s, early 70s, in a blended family, which was really uncommon at that time. Um, I lost my mum when I was very, very young. So I sort of joined a, 
you know, a family where I got a new older sister and then I had a, um, a younger sister. So I always kind of felt something was missing, that I was always trying to fit in. I think the only place that's never spilled over to is my work because I've always, you know, my work is something I'm passionate about. It always have been, whatever role I've been in. I've always felt I've been a really competent nurse, um, always fitted in to where I've worked. Um, but I guess socially and in other gyms, I don't know that I've ever really been able to be myself. And I just feel coming to AKR there's no pretenses. And again, we'll speak about that later because it's, you know, it hasn't all been plain sailing and all smiles and roses and flowers. Um, but I've really been able to be true to myself. And I, I think I've really grown into a person. Um, yes, there was aspects of me that came into AKR, um, but I've just been able, I feel, to flourish. Let your barrier down. Let, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let let my barrier down. And that that was something you felt on that that first that first day when you signed yeah. up. Yeah, and it's hard to explain. I don't think it's something that um, that there are words for. It's a feeling. Mm -hmm. It's 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 really nice to hear. Obviously, yeah. you know, we've we've spoken a lot over the last five yeah, years or yeah, so, yeah. but. It's really nice to hear because, you know, as I've said in some of the introductions, like that was creating a place where people could feel like they belong, but not just, you know, because people do feel like they belong in gyms, but typically it's, it's young, fit people already. And, you know, you're saying coming in, you know, in your, in your 50s, and of course you've experience in gyms, but to, from, from the minute you stepped in to immediately feel at home, is, it's really pleasing to hear. I liked when you, you used the, the words like you felt like you were a person in the gym you weren't just a number or a member we we communicated as humans right from the start yeah. and I've you know regardless of what's been going on I've always felt I've been a person and not a member So let, let's continue on then you, you, you came in you, you felt like you belonged you felt that you could you know be you, show up as you Tell us, like, what happened next in the journey? Was it, you know, you've, you've touched on that it wasn't plain sailing, but can you can you remember what those those first few weeks or months were like? Yes, so the first few months were, were great because this was something new and this was, you know, I was um, at A and I was going to get to point B, which was getting into those jeans. I'm still not into those jeans, but we can revisit that as well. <laughs> I remember... Um, you know, like I've said, the the membership, the, the people who were coming in, it was a small group of people. So you got to know each other very quickly. And I remember training through in the gym, there were just yourself, just the two of you as coaches. And I remember thinking that there's a whole lot of fun going on here. Um, so yeah, I felt I really fitted in with the people I felt I learned a lot about the basics of movement, which I hadn't really gone through before. Some, I'd had personal training before, and, you know, I'd had good personal trainers, but sometimes I felt, you know, people were just standing, counting with me. And I'd never really learned, I think, the basics of, I guess, the main lifts, the deadlifts, the squats. I do remember still having this, um, I suppose, mentality that I had to lift heavier each time I came in the gym. So if I was doing, let's use a deadlift, if I was doing 30 kilograms. And you'll remember, Mike, and, and maybe you as well, Lindsay, I kept asking you for a book because I have to record yeah. these. I have to, and I remember you saying, Mike, but when are you going to stop? You know, you're going to do 30, and then you go 35, and then four. Where do you stop? You'll have an impressive deadlift by, <laughs> yeah, by the end absolutely. of it. Absolutely, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So it took me a long time to get my head around that because that's what I'd been used to. For all those years, it seems. For all yeah. those years. Can I just just to sort of jump in there a second? It sounds like when you first came in then, you said those first four months, you know, again, it was something new. Did it 
I can imagine it felt at that time that it was the answer in the same way that every previous gym or every previous diet in its moment had been the answer. You know, it's like the next the next solution to like I think you said fix to fix you before. To fix me. Yes. Yeah. And so at that time it you know, for people every diet they start it sounds like this is the diet or every this is new the gym, one. this and is the this one. This is the gym. And so it was that, that same thing and you were in the same as you said, the same mentality of okay, I, you know, I have to lift more weight, you know, I guess lose lose weight, increase the, the strength and, st- and always always yeah. making progress in that way. Yeah, because progress for me was always weight coming down in body and weight going up in metal. That, that was progress. And, and so on that, I, I guess you'd, you'd experienced progress in the past. Yes. And, and so where did, where did that go? Like, because obviously, I don't know if obviously is the right word, but it, it wasn't just a straight line of progress over all those, you know, from the aerobics in the 70s or whenever it was you said. Like, talk about that a little bit for me. So I think I would get to a certain point, I'd be feeling good, and then I would let things slip. But if I go way back, so I remember when I had my daughter, who is now 28, and I went to a slimming club. And, you know, I'd always battled with my weight before that, and I went to a slimming club. And I lost six and a half stone. Now, you might think that's great, but what it was, I would I would have this diet plan. It was actually okay. And every Monday night, without fail, I'd stand on the scales in a, a place in Bellman Street, and I'd be told I'd lost X amount of weight, I'd lost X amount of weight. And then I'd get home on a Monday night and, you know, people, friends, family would phone and say, how much weight did you lose? So it was never, how are you, Susan? And I think that just kind of, you know, that, that kind of spiralled over. And although it was great to have lost that weight, I didn't know how to maintain it. You know, I just read off and says, right, that's what I'm having for my breakfast, that's what I'm having for my lunch. And I suppose that's just how it was over the years. So I would make a bit of progress and then I'd get fed up because I'd never really learned anything. Mm-hmm. It was people were telling me what to do. And I remember once you said, Mike, and, and you said it as well, Lindsay, you're an adult, you have choices. Yeah. It, it sounds like... It sounds like your worth, either through your own eyes or everybody else's, was attached to your weight. Always, mm-hmm. always. From when I was, you know, from from when I was very young, and food, so food was food was comfort. It was a reward. Yeah. Yeah. If I was slim, I was oh, you're losing too much weight. If I was fat, I was, well, you, you, you know. And so I guess you're on this path, like, and I'm sure. Countless of people out there listening would 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 identify with this one, where you you know maybe your your motivation rises, you start a new diet or a new gym, and it's right. I'm making progress. I want to lose weight. You lose a heap of weight or some weight, and then something happens where you stop doing the thing you were doing because maybe you've succeeded or maybe you've gotten fed up. But then after that, you don't have the skill set to to continue. And so you go off track until there's another new diet or another new thing. And the Absolutely. focus was purely on, on, the, on the body weight. Absolutely. And that's where things have changed with EKR. So let's get into that then. Because you said initially, when you first came in, it, they, they'd already changed in that you felt that you could be you. But things hadn't changed in terms... Of, OK, they've changed. You did say that you felt that the coaching and you were learning movement skills that you maybe, even though you'd been doing fitness for, you know, a number of years, you were learning things that you hadn't learned in terms of movement skills and, and the coaching and things you were getting. But your mindset was still in that. Progression. We, we, in season one, we introduced like the, the stop-start cycles, mm-hmm. the perfectionism, you know, and, and that's, that's where you were at, right? Yes. And so tell us what, what happened next then. 
after those first few months. How long have like... you got? <laughs> oh, you have plenty of time. <laughs> There's been no defining moment. There's been no moment where I've gone, I've got this now, because I don't think there's ever that moment when you've absolutely got it. I think what has changed for me and what AKR has, has really helped me to, to change is that fitness, and, and I, know, I know we all say um, it's the, the journey is the goal, but for me, it has really turned around that all or nothing mindset. Sometimes I still go there and, you know, I think during lockdown I've probably had a, a couple of spells where I've, you know, I've not trained at all and I've eaten whatever I've wanted, but I can very quickly pull that together again now. I think AKR has really helped me with the psychology of fitness. You know, fitness is not just about your body. It's about having a mentally healthy attitude um, I think for me, you know, I've spoken a bit about fitting in, but I think it's just the acceptance here. It doesn't matter what shape you are. It doesn't matter what size you are. It doesn't matter if you're feeling a bit under the weather about life in general. Well, it does matter, but, but there's support there to, to get you through. So, so, yeah, for me, it's been a gradual process. There's been highs, there's been lows, there's been tears. I left for a while for different reasons, which I'm very happy to talk about. Um, there was a time before I left that, um, that I remember writing you a long email and it was all about the gym and it was all about the changes. I, I, that's a huge thing for me. I could never deal with change the way I deal with it now. And I remember you taking the time at a weekend and writing a, a very firm but very fair and very caring <coughs> email and saying, Susan, it's not the gym. It's not the weights. It's, it's your eating. And you had actually taken the time to look back at the, you know, we'd um, check in, have the, the check-ins. You, yeah. you said, this is what's happening and you were right, <laughs> you were right. But I was always looking for something external mm -hmm. to blame my, um, I don't want to call it failure because failure is learning. But I was able to, you know, I was a bit like. I, I think, you know, when people are hurting, I think this is the, the key thing. So for the listener, at that time, we had a, a monthly form where members were invited to if they wanted to, and we have a everything is optional mantra. They could, they could just do a check-in and rank themselves on, on some of the basics, some of these skills that we've been talking about in this season. Mm -hmm. And so when Susan had sent me this email saying, oh, I'm not sure, you know, the programming has changed or there's there some of the stuff in the gym. And I went back and looked at all, all of the monthly check-ins and at the start of the year, when you were really in a positive place, all the scores in the nutrition ones were quite high. And in the more recent ones, you'd ranked yourself lower on the nutrition and I think it's natural when when people are hurting to you know to to point the finger and yeah. things like that and don't get me wrong we we take it on and look at ourselves but it was you know it was clear when I when I looked into it that you were hurting because you were off track with with the nutrition stuff yeah. letting life time. take over a little bit it, well it was taking over a bit but for me you know although the email was you know it was firm mm -hmm. I think that was because of where we were at with a relationship, uh -huh. though. You know, like well, that I could do that. And that's just what I was about to say. For me, that was saying, I care. Mm -hmm. It wasn't saying, you're speaking rubbish. You know, as it, it would have been far easier for me as a gym owner to say, OK, see you later. Yeah. You know, yeah. if that's how you feel, see you later. But yeah. it was like, we can help. The human side. Yes. So where I'm at... Um, where I'm at now is, I don't, I don't know if we're speaking about now. <laughs> I've gone well, off. Um, I don't know if you, do you want to talk so we can, there's a few things we can get into. You said, you said it wasn't plain sailing. So we can, we can get into some of the ups and downs in the journey. Yeah. We can also jump into the early 2019 when you, you did decide to step away for a while. Um, and I know you want to talk about the COVID stuff. So are, are there any sort of 
let's talk about from 2016 to 2019. Is there any sort of moments that spring out from your journey at that point? Ups and downs, challenges, victories along the way. It sounds like you, over these five years, you've, you've moved away, and it, it, this really fits well with what we've discussed in the podcast so far. You've moved away from the, the stop-start cycle, the all-or-nothing, the perfectionism, embraced fitness as a more rounded concept in your life, not just body weight, and recognise that it's an infinite game where the journey is the goal and it's, you know, it's, a, it's a continuing thing. But is there anything in that, say, up to 2019 when you stepped away that, that you feel is relevant that you want to share? There'd be so many things. The friendships that I've made in the, the gym um, had a huge part of AKR life. I think it's just confidence in myself has has been a major plus point. You know, the confidence when you're lifting weights and, and you don't always have to be heavy weights, but just that sense of achievement, um, you take that out of the gym with you. And I think up to, to 2019, when I had to step away for a while, um, it, the, the biggest takeaways for me is that what I do in here really transfers into my everyday life. I think when there were downs, I was able to see them through. I was able to, you know, book in for a session, a, a, a one-to-one -one review yeah. session. Even um, if you were, sorry to interrupt there, but even if you were feeling down or if Susan was ever feeling really, really well, she would utilise her 30-day check-ins, which our members always. get. Always. Always. Um, and we could, it was just putting the worlds to right sometimes mm -hmm. or guiding you in the right direction. And it was great to have you involved in that. Yeah. And for you to take, take that on every month, even no matter where you were feeling. And, and sometimes I wouldn't even know that I was, you know, doing particularly well or if I was struggling a bit. And just that chat that we would have, you know, I would always come out feeling really positive. You know, there were tears, mm -hmm. you know, life happens, doesn't it? And I think you can't always be in this sort of happy, smiley, everything's rosy mood all the time. Um, and it was good just to hear a good greet yeah. sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that's, we spoke about this in season one, and just like normalising the ups and downs in life, normalising that you're not always going to be motivated, or the idea, often it comes from this American self-help stuff, that the idea that you've always got to be positive and not beaten yeah. happy. And yeah. so when you're not, it feels like a disaster, yes. when actually it's it's totally normal. Yes. You, I, I'm, I'm realising that we've maybe glossed over that journey a bit from the all or nothing to, to where you're at now. You, you did mention you could be you and the feeling of acceptance. You, you touched on like the quality of the coaching and you touched on the social support. What, what do you think, and I think you did mention some education stuff, but what do you think, you know, was it, is it just a journey you go along? Was there type, what do you think was different here that helped you move from, from that, we'll call it the all or nothing sort of place or the weight loss focus place to, to seeing fitness differently? So within myself, I think feeling stronger physically um, kind of, I suppose showed me that fitness is more, more than weight. But I've done a lot of reading. So I know that we've shared books that we've found helpful. I'm a reader anyway. So, you know, I've read quite a lot of um, not self-help books as such, but, you know, psychology around eating behaviours or just behaviours in general. But also the habits here have really helped. Um, so the nutrition, you know, including protein, um, powering down at night has been a, a big help. Um, so just following habits ra or creating habits rather than following rules has been a huge help. Mm -hmm. you know, Flexibility. Flexibility, because every diet I've tried in the past has had rules, whether it's, you know, you can't eat carbs or don't eat after 6 p.m. at night. You know, my job <laughs> it doesn't allow me not to eat after mm -hmm. 6 p.m. at night. So the, the habits, and I still practice them, and I know when I'm not practicing them because I don't feel good. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, great. That that fits very much in with what we've been talking about yeah. throughout throughout this season. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> the um, tell tell me about those. Like you said, you still practice them. What does that look like? Are you are you diligent with every single one? Is it a bit of pick and choose? Like. What does that look like for you? No, I'm not I'm not diligent with all of them all of the time. But for example, if I notice that I'm not including enough protein in my diet, I'll really focus on that. And I love that the 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 people who come to AKR, the members, lead these habits. So if I find that I'm, you know, scrolling through my phone when I'm in my bed at ten o'clock at night, I think right, I need to follow the power down habit. Um, a huge change for me, I, I, I remember it was a habit before, but drinking water, you know, if I mm-hmm. find that I'm tired but sluggish, I realise I've not been drinking enough water, so I kind of focus in on that. So I think I practice most of the most of the time, but there are times that I need to zone in, and I'm much more aware of that now. And and with the food, what what changes have you made with regards to, you know, diets and eating habits and things like that? Well, I live on my own now. I don't, <laughs> don't have two grown up children, so you know, I, I have some. Well, I have much more choice because you know, I know if I put something in the fridge, it'll stay there. <laughs> Um, but I do. So I'm not a Sunday afternoon meal prepper, but I would never cook for for one. So if I'm making I don't know, a chilli or a stew. I always make enough for four or five and I freeze them. So I've always got a fallback. Um, I do tend to plan a couple of days in advance what I'm having so that I shop properly. Again, it doesn't always work, but most of the time it does. So I I do that. Um, In terms of training... Again, I don't plan on a week-to-week basis, and that has changed for me as well because I used to be quarter past six on a Monday is when I have to train. Mm -hmm. Regardless of my energy levels, you know, when the the bookings came up, it's like I get my quarter past six sessions in. Now I'm much more flexible with that, but I do plan it a few days in advance and it fits in with my work or what I'm doing outside work. Um, so they're really positive changes. That and I've do, you, made. do you still just going back to the food? Do you still have have rules and things? You know, from going from going from that position as being a, a chronic dieter, you know, that's. I just want to dive into that a little bit more. Like, what's your attitude or your relationship with food like compared to those those previous days? It's much better. It's much much better. So I can eat out without feeling anxious. I don't have the same, you know, if I eat a bar of chocolate, it's not the end of the world. Um, Sometimes I do fall back into that, you know, I'm counting calories in my head or I kind of think, right, I have to get back on track. And and I'm okay with that. Not so much with the calories. I've tried a few times over lockdown and it's not for me. Great if it works for for people. but I think it is just about that balance. And, and I'll recognise myself if the balance is tipping, that I'm having too many um, foods that are not so nutritious. Mm-hmm. I, I just know how I feel within myself, really. Yeah. I, I know how my body feels. And it was, you know, you wrote something the other day. What would your body say if it's speaking to you? And it was so that timely was mm-hmm. because, you know, sometimes my body does say you're eating too much rubbish. Because I know, I know myself, my body doesn't feel that it functions mm-hmm. as well, you know, whether it's outside the gym or inside the gym. Yeah. It's, there's, a real, there's a real theme that I think that's, that's come through. And you said, you said a little earlier on that I would say to you, you know, you're an adult, you can do what you like sort of thing. But from what what you've spoken about so far you know coming from this place where it's worth is attached to weight and you've got to do the stuff that people or your diet rules or all these things say you've got to do in order to lose weight to come into this this place where 
you know, you said, well, lifting weights made me feel strong or I know how my body feels or I can, I can reflect and realise by myself when I need to work a bit more in the power down sort of habit. But it sounds like there's this journey of, call it empowerment or call it ownership or call it autonomy, where it's like, I think one of the biggest issues that people have is, is the rules. That they, that they think there are in fitness. And when people are controlled by rules, they rebel. And you've, you've gone through this years of all or not, like following the rules, rebelling, following the rules, rebelling. Yep. And now, you know, you can jump in and I say, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like now you're in charge and you're doing what's right for you in the way, you know, that, that works for you. A hundred percent. And I've spoken a lot about how a, what I do in AKR translates to my outside life. And I think you said earlier, Lindsay, about having choices and having control. But I also have boundaries now that I didn't have before. So I can say no to things because I was always very ready to be available for mm -hmm. other people. But it's only now that I've made myself available to me that I've been able to really focus on, on my health, you know, my psychological health, my physical health, and really work out what that's about. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm on holiday this week, um, and it would be all too easy to have every day jam-packed with meeting people, which is lovely. Which it always used to be, though. Which always I used to be, that, yeah. and I'll still meet you know, friends a couple of days, but I will have a couple of days where I have plans. And if my plans are to do nothing but sit and read my book and go for a walk around the river, that's my plans. It doesn't mean I'm free. Giving yourself permission, I guess. Yeah. Giving myself permission. And that's a huge change for me. Mm -hmm. Great. Do you want to go in and talk about, so at the start of 2019, you decided, you know, I, I need to take some time away from this. What? What happened there? What, what prompted that? Um, talk about that period. I felt at that time that life was too full on. I was working in a job on my own. There should have been two of us and I'd been working that way for about two years on and off, but this was permanent. This, this was going to be long term. There were changes at work as well with the car parking, so you know, I need my car for my work. I have to get to um, to my place of work by a certain time to be able to, to park. I was revisiting some financial things, um, you know, looking at um, retirement. <laughs> Long way off yet. But I was starting to look at all these things. And I think I was, you know, I was feeling okay at AKR. But I just felt that I wasn't utilising what you were offering. So it wasn't about AKR, it was about me. And, and I just felt that my capacity to use what you were offering. And there were practical things, you know, work was extremely stressful, the situation that I was in. So I took some time out. It's, and it sounds, sorry just to jump in, it sounds like just one of those situations where something had to give. Yeah. Yes. It, it did have to give. However, in that six months that I took out, what I realised was that I needed and wanted AKR. I was still in touch with people that were coming. You know, I, I said earlier, I've made really good friends. And although they understood why I took some time out, at the time I, I didn't see it as time out. I, I, I just felt there was... Um, you know, there wasn't a way for me to continue at AKR. And I think they could see what I needed, but it wasn't for them to see. And I made that decision on my own to come back and say, and I remember emailing you and, and I knew you would say what has changed. So I thought, I'm going to be prepared. <laughs> you know, before Mike asks, I'm going to be prepared. And what I did was I, I, I just took a step back and I said, right, this is what you can't change. You can't change work. You can take steps to, to change it, which I did. And although the situation didn't change for a while, um, I was able to, to start making inroads. I was able to, 
to look at my finances and said, you know, I worked out that I was spending something like, was it £40 a month or something on Diet Pepsi? Well, that's ridiculous. People say, give up your daily coffee and people think, well, that doesn't make a dent in anything. Well, it absolutely <laughs> does. So that was a bit more for the pension pot. So I, I had really just looked at how I could come back to AKR because you had so much to offer, always had. And when I left, I knew that, but I felt I couldn't utilize that. But by taking that step back and, and talking with, you know, one of my close friends that I met here, I was able to say, do you know what? If it's important, you can make anything work for you. Mm -hmm. And in terms of your fitness and, you know, training and nutrition and eating habits, what happened in that, that six months? Did you continue exercising? Did you...? No. I, you know, I had best intentions and, you know, I would go for a walk every day or I would... They had... Um, so I work at the hospital and they had free aerobic sessions and I think yoga for staff, so I was always going to go to them, but I never did. I think I maybe went to one of the bigger gyms once. Um, so no, and, and my eating, I, I always say, and this is something else that I've learned, if I'm eating and eating and eating, then there's something eating me. And what was eating me at the time is that I wasn't at AKR. I wasn't having that, you know, AKR feeds me in a way that food doesn't have to. What do, you, what do you think that is? As again, was that just that sense of acceptance? Was it the social side? Was it the, the training itself? What? It's everything. You know, you come into AK, well, I come into AKR and I always do look forward to coming. Of course, it's a thought sometimes, <laughs> but I always liken it to, you know, I used to do agency work and I'd book a shift maybe a, three weeks before and then the day would come. I think, oh, you know, why did I book this shift? Mm -hmm. As soon as my uniform on, I was fine. And it's the same. Once you've got your gym kit on, you're fine. And I've never come out of AKR thinking I wish I hadn't done that. Never. And, and so, sorry, carry on. You, no, on your own. I, I was going to say, you said you, you joined like a, a big box gym or whatever and went once. W what was the difference? Because like, after three years of training with us, you, you would have had the tools to go and, you know, put your own workout together and, and go through it and things. What was different is that it was, it was full of people, but there was no one there. Mm. It was, you were anonymous. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I do feel I'm quite, a, for as much as I've spoken about, you know, not feeling I've felt in, I am quite a sociable, outgoing person. So I would speak to somebody who's on the, hi, how you doing? And, it's a look as if to say, yeah. do I know you? <laughs> so it's, it's that belonging, that's yeah. feeling a part of something, yeah. feeling yeah. like you matter and the, pe the other people matter and, and they're people. <laughs> Walking in and it's somebody just, saying your name even. Well, that's yeah. a huge difference, isn't it? Mm -hmm. the, um, let's, let's jump forward a year then. So, or yeah, is that a year? For, well, you came, you came <laughs> back. Lost a year. Yeah, where's time gone? <laughs> so you came back... Uh, Summer 2019, yeah. Pick pick things up again. Got going. Obviously, 2020 was was when the pandemic hit. I think you wanted to, to share a little bit about your experiences of how you know how that was for you. Yeah. So so just to, before that, I came back and I felt I'd never been away. I really <laughs> felt I'd never been away. It was a much bigger membership in terms of numbers. There were new coaches. But as soon as I was back in that door, you know, I smile when I, even, yeah. when I even think about it. I just felt I was home. I felt that I became really consistent with my training. Um, I feel that, so that six months I was away, although I didn't perhaps train, I didn't really pay so much attention to my nutrition, it was still part of my journey. And, and I think it's so important for me to say that because AKR was never never out of my, my heart um, and I was still learning, I was still using the tools so it really didn't feel like I'd been away so I was training consistently and then of course good old pandemic came along um, for me 
That was a really difficult time in my life when when we locked down in March, March 2020. Yeah. So in January of that year, my son was really ill and he was diagnosed with Crohn's. Um, we'd had a really worrying time. He had loads of hospital admissions. Um, and it's probably the hardest single thing I've done as a parent is to see my son go through that. So when we locked down in March, we were still in the middle of all that. Um, it didn't affect me work-wise. I didn't train at home, so th there were plenty online classes, and then you started Zoom classes. But I just felt, you know, um, where I live, I don't have the luxury of a, a spare room or even a spare space. So I didn't do do the workouts then, and my focus was really on on getting treatment for my son. But then when we were able to train outside, that's when things really turned around for me during the pandemic. And we, we trained at a local um, cricket field. And I remember um, some of the members used to, to do a lap of the cricket field as a warm up. They would run and I was, I'll never do that. I'll never do that. And then one day, this, this girl who had just come back as well after everything had been locked down, and she said, I'm going to have a go. And I says, I'm going to have a go with you. And round we went, and I couldn't run the length of myself. <laughs> and then I met um, Robin, who, who said, you've only got to focus on putting one foot in front of another and keep going. So I said, OK, it's that easy. And it was awful. And I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. And I loved the outdoor classes. I, I loved being back in amongst with, you know, my, the, the people I knew from AKR, with the coaches. I loved feeling stronger. I loved moving. But then I started doing a lap of the pitch. And then I started doing two. And then Robin and I um, used to hang back at the, the car park and, and talk a bit. <laughs> and now we're together. <laughs> and so through AKR, <laughs> through AKR, um, I have a love of running. And if somebody had said to me a year ago that you'll run a 5K, I would have just laughed. So when we came back, when we could start training again towards the end of 2020, 20. I was right back in the gym, really excited. I always say the AKR lent itself to post-pandemic conditions before we even knew there was going to be a pandemic because it was so clean. You know, as coaches, you're so meticulous. You're so organised. So coming back just wasn't an issue for me. I was excited and I I've loved the training. And I would say that I've, I've just got to a point in my life where I'm genuinely happy. I'm happy in the gym, I'm happy outside the gym. I've got a lovely partner. My children are settled. And, and training is something that I do now. It's something I do. And I'm going to use your, your tagline, but it energises my outside life. Perfect, perfect. A hundred percent. Don't know what else to no, say to that. Don't know what else to but say. It, but it's it's just just listening to that, and it's been great to be a part of your journey through it all, especially over the last couple of years when you've come back. It's just you, you've just taken it in your stride and really went for it. Yeah. And you seem like just on top of the world at the moment. Well, well, I am, and I think that six months that I took out, and although I took it out reluctantly, it was perhaps one of the best things I did because. It's really allowed me to come back with a much different mindset to training. And I don't for a minute think that this this is me. That this is you know, but you know what? When life throws me a curveball, if I can deal with what we've dealt with in 2020, I mean I remember going to a funeral at the end of 2020, and it was my, my daughter-in-law's mum. 
and I had gone to pay my respects in the street. I didn't know her mum, but obviously my daughter-in-law is, is really important to me. And I came away from there. And the only place I wanted to come was here. And I came in and I said to the coach, there were three of us in, and I said to the coach, do you know, I've just been to a funeral and I'm just not feeling like a workout. I just want to stretch. And he said, that's fine. And we did the warm up together and he gave me a programme just to, to stretch out on my own. It didn't impact on the other two girls. And then we cooled down together. And that's fitness. Yeah. That's fitness. I feel like I'm welling up here. <laughs> but it's Stop true, it, it, it is, it, it just is how I feel. I, I've got, you know, with Robin, but I've got such good support with him. You know, my children are settled, work is settled. I'm no longer working on my own. I love my job. Um, i just run a, a 5K this morning with people from AKR to raise funds for, for MND Scotland. So, so life is good, but my journey is not finished. My journey is, life is my journey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's that again, going on that, that path that we, that we try and encourage people is, is recognising that you can't, you can't win, there is no end, you can't no, finish No, there's or no fitness. stop sign. No. And, there's, and there's always going to be bumps and ups and downs along the way. You show up, you, some days you do a big deadlift, some days you do a stretching session. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I guess we, we should wrap this up. Is there, is there anything else that you you want to leave us with, or leave leave the listener who might be listening in with? I think just to say, you know, fitness is what you need it to be. Whether that's physical, whether it's emotional, whether it's mental, you've got it within you. But just find the people that will help you. Find the right people and you'll find your own way. Thank you, Susan. Thanks for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure having you with us, not just today, but over the last five plus, five and a half years. Thank you. Uh, And we look forward to continuing your journey with you. Uh, That's another episode in the bag, folks. Uh, Jace. Jay should come in and do the wrap up. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> thanks for listening again. Next week, we're going to do the little summary show for season two. Remember, if you've enjoyed this one, please, please help us out with sharing it. If you can think of one person who might benefit from listening to Susan's story, go ahead and share that with them just now. We'd really appreciate a review. If you're listening on iTunes or Spotify, remember, you can also tune in on YouTube and see Susan's lovely smiley face at the same time. (laughs) All right, that's all for this one, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.